Park Lane marks the eastern boundary of Hyde Park and it runs for three quarters of a mile from Marble Arch in the north to Hyde Park Corner in the south. It takes a bit of imagination to understand why this six-lane carriageway achieved such a status, but back in the 18th century, this was a charming country lane. It became lined with some of the biggest privately owned mansions in the city because of its fine views across Hyde Park and its position on the western edge of London. The Duke of Westminster's family lived in Grosvenor House and the Holford family built Dorchester House. This was demolished in 1929 and was replaced with the Dorchester Hotel. Time for a cuppa. But not any old tea. I'm talking about afternoon tea, of course, a long-standing tradition associated with London's high society, back when this was a thriving residential street. It all started with the seventh Duchess of Bedford, who complained of a sinking feeling during the afternoon. At the time, it was the norm to dine twice a day, so that feeling of afternoon weariness was a common occurrence. Her solution was to have a nice pot of tea, a light snack at about four o'clock in private. Thank you. Eventually, friends joined her at her summer home, Woburn Abbey, and the event became an occasion for the diaries. Oh, that looks great already. The idea spread to other social hostesses before becoming a popular activity for all of London's fashionable society. Oh, yeah. Today, we may be used to tucking into three meals a day, but the tradition of afternoon tea still lives on in many of London's hotels and tea rooms. And there must be an army of people behind the scenes just to get everything ready and keep supplies up on those lovely trolleys. So, Henry, just give us an idea of how big the operation is down here. We are 18 dedicated pastry chefs in the department, five of those purely concentrating on the afternoon tea pastries. During their day, they're producing about 2,500 pieces of individual pastries, and during our five seatings, we're going through 300 bottles of champagne per day. So do you think it would be OK to let me loose in the kitchen and to have a go and make afternoon tea? Well, not like that, Jenny. <laughs> golden peanuts. He's not impressed. Look at that! See, you're quite good. And then I might put one of those in the middle. Is that over the top? Look at that, that's perfect. This one's dedicated to you, Henry, because this is nutty but nice. I'm all up. Thank you, very <laughs> nice, <Jenny. laughs> Ooh, I'm not sure I earn my stripes there. I think I'll stick to enjoying tea and cakes rather than making them. 